On issues raised at prior meeting. Special events, Felicia. Good evening, Mayor and Council. First on the agenda is the March for Our Lives event on March 24th. Second is the Rodeo for recreation, recreation, which will require street closures, as well as fireworks. Third is the Memorial Day Carnival, hosted by Triumph and Life Church in Bradley Park. <coughs> Next is the Central New Jersey Brain Tumor Walk Remembrance Ceremony to be held on May 12th on the beach. Super Safe Summer on May 19th. Georgie's first annual car show, a fundraiser benefiting Little League. Uh, they're seeking street closures of Steiner Place for the event on May 19th. Asbury Ice Break Swim event on um, June 16th. Festival of Life to be held in uh, Bradley Park June 24th through the 29th. Asbury Park Family Day uh, surfing event on July 14th. And One More Try uh, Triathlon on September 16th. And the last two events are weddings, one on uh, August the 11th, the other on September 22nd. Any, Any questions? questions? All right. Thank you. We'll move to items to be presented. The 508 Third Avenue College achieved proposed improvements to public right of way. Michelle? Yeah. Good evening, council members and members of the public. This is, an, this is to introduce you to the improvements on the public right of way that were requirements for 503 Third Avenue College of Chief Charter School that were placed upon them with their application to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. They received approval and they had in the public right of way three specific conditions. One was for School safety zones, school safety zone signage, the repainting of three crosswalks, and the striping of a no parking zone in front of the proposed school. The the crosswalks to be restriped are at the intersection of Emory and Third, Grand and Third, and Grand and Second. And you all have you have an illustration showing the location of the new signage and the green rectangle area will be the pickup zone. It will be for a half hour in the AM AM and the PM no parking. That's it? That's it. So and the cost for this is bore by the applicant, right? Yes, the cost is borne by the applicant. This, um, the signage and the painting of the crosswalks is a resolution. The no parking area is an ordinance, and you'll be seeing that hopefully next meeting. So, and I'm 100% fine with this. Um, how come it's all these and not this one? Um, that I can I cannot answer. Mike Manzella probably could answer that better. I guess it, this is also where is this? I'm not sure how many crossing guards are there, but there was something that determined that these were the the key intersections. Oh, that. It's fine. So this will be on the next agenda. We can move this as quick as possible because it's holding up signatures and everything. So. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Review of this evening's agenda. Thank you. Um, resolution 2018-107 is special event application to approve. Resolution 2018-108 is declaring uh, the third week in March as National Poisonous Prevention Week. Uh, resolution 2018-109 is the cancellation of taxes, taxes with respect to uh, 601 X Street. 
resolution 2018-110 is the disposition of surplus property, um, old computers and computer parts. And then resolution 2018-111 is that we comply with the Equal Opportunity Commission EEO hiring practice. Uh, moving on to the individual resolutions. Resolution 2018-112 is the temporary budget. And 113 is the payment of the <coughs> Resolution 2018-114 is authorizing the lease agreement for the fire equipment storage at 801 Main Street. Um, I'm gonna ask that you table that for this meeting so uh, the lease is finalized. Uh, we're hoping to have it done, but it's not <coughs> Resolution 2018-115 is authorizing the purchase of a Packer truck. It's a garbage truck. Um, our current fleet, is, you know, as I mentioned last time, is old, um, past its useful life, and we need a new garbage truck. 2018-116 is amending a contract for TNM services for the Sunset Avenue Footbridge Project. Um, as part of the Footbridge Project, FEMA and DEP required additional work that was never authorized um, by the City Council to take through the contract. As you read this resolution, you'll notice that it says we only pay TNF if we receive the 90% payment um, from FEMA. So this, this bill is on hold until we find out from FEMA. Um, we'll be submitting the FEMA paper for sure. The project is still open, um, technically, in FEMA's viewpoint. Resolution 2018-117 is the contract for, is a recommendation of contracts for installation of network cabling for City Hall. Um, we found that the second floor wiring is shot um, the, it's probably 13 or 14 years old. It doesn't work as effective. We're finding technical glitches. Um, and some of it, quite honestly, was just flat out installed wrong. So we're not seeing the correct network throughput on um, aspects. Resolution 2018-118 is awarding a contract for Millennium Communications for first security cameras at City Hall. Um, as we previously mentioned over the last two years, two times, once the generator project is done, we're going to move on to City Hall security. This is the first aspect of this. Um, we're not telling people where we put the cameras, but we're still like security cameras. Um, and then we hope to have an award for um, door access locks in the next meeting or two. Well, we have to go through the We're still trying to figure out the nuances of that. But this will allow us to have security, um, better security within in this building. Um, Resolution 119 and 121 are for three SUVs under the state contract. If we didn't do this today, tomorrow the price goes up $1,000. So by putting these resolutions on now, it will save us $4,000. Um, there is different language in this <coughs> that says that we cannot pay anyone until the 20 day stop period is over, which is actually the 20th of the month, which we wouldn't be paying anyone anyway. Um, but this at least allows us to get a purchase order in legally and save us the money that we would otherwise have to spend. Um, resolution 122 is to authorize the final part of the, the parking stages that you've, been, you've seen added. Um, additionally, this is going to include six dedicated each badge access, um, access points, parking meters for um, the waterfront so we can try to continue to alleviate um, uh, lines there. Internally, we're debating um, the finances of this. We might ask if we had $16,000, which we weren't sure we were using in the menu items. We could probably appropriate some of that money there and some of the beach utility money to help offset some of these costs. But this is all paid for as part of a um, municipal bond passed last year. <coughs> Resolution 123 is at ratifying the Ask Me Union contract. Um, this has been one of the five union contracts that I've been negotiating um, it is less than the 2% that the state is required. Um, it's been ratified by the ASME union and the state has signed off on it. So tonight we're asking that, that the, the governing body sign off on it. In the next couple of weeks, we will probably have the other three or four contracts. Um, ordinances for introduction. Let me stop. Is there any questions so far? Ordinances for introduction is to exceed the municipal budget appropriations limit to establish a cap bank. Um, what that does is allow us, and I'll keep this as simple terms as possible, if you're allowed to have $100 in your appropriation limit, we spent 98 this year, and we appropriate 98, next year we can use that $2 extra for the following year's carryover. 
Uh, this is our second meeting for three ordinances. Uh, one is for the carbon at the sewer plant. Um, as we know, as I've mentioned in the past, that is at the end of its useful life and has caused some odors. Uh, we anticipate this being out to bid shortly. Um, I think within the next seven to ten days. Resident Ordinance 2018-8 is approving a document redevelopment plan for 1001 First Avenue, um, which the city planner is here for any questions on. And then 2018-9 changes the inspection date for taxis uh, from November to March. Lastly, uh, the K on the agenda is Resolution 2018-120, which introduces the municipal budget. Um, again, as you've heard me say, when we had the historic Moody's upgrade, um, three levels on our credit rating, this is the first budget that does, in many years, that does not request transitional aid from the state. Um, we've had requested no transitional aid dollars. We still will be under the management principles. Uh, they still will have say in hirings and firings and suspensions and how we operate. But the financial side of things, um, there's no money associated with this draft budget. The highlights of the budget. That's a huge, huge mm -hmm. thing for Esbury Park. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the average assessment was $297,820 uh, this year, which is up about 45000 from last year. Uh, the assessment last year was $252,411. The average taxpayer will see a decrease um, of $46.66 as we stand now. Um, last year, the average taxpayer had an increase of $101. Um, so you're really looking at maybe someone with a home of 320, 340 would see a zero on the municipal portion. Obviously, we don't control school or county, but the municipal portion, um, a majority of this, the, the property owners will see a zero on the municipal side. Um, our tax collection rate was a little less, which we've been working on. It was 0.3, which is like two people. Um, but otherwise, financially, we are we're learning to walk. Um, and in one or two more years, we will be um, in a very, very stable position. So, any questions? Go back to 121 for a second, just because it was an add on that I wasn't paying attention. Is that to replace or to add to the fleet? It's, a, it's a, to replace one that caught on fire and getting rid of it. All right, thanks. Matters by the City Council. Um, so I'd just like to remind everyone about the uh, March. Um, on, uh, on March 24th, kids and families will march for our lives, um, take to the streets to demand that lives and safety be a priority and to end gun violence. So in Asbury Park, this will take place at um, Trinity Church at 1130. People will gather and then march over to Library Square Park at noon. Hope you can all make it. Wait, Trinity. Trinity Episcopal Church at 1130. And then, oh, walk over and to the library. And then walk over to right, Library right, right. Square okay. Park at noon. That's been changed. That's what's on this flyer that I got. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think it's going to start at Bradley. No, start at Library Park. Oh, and go library to Bradley. Bradley. Library to the Okay. To Bradley. Yeah. Well, the flyer I got yesterday from Sue Chapman said they're starting at Trinity at 1130. Oh, and then so going to library. So it'll be somewhere. <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see the crowd find us. <laughs> just just let the police know. <clears throat> now they have to close down. And, and maybe to call Mark, right? Is it is it Mark who the city? I think Mark McDonald, somebody the ceiling. Yeah, Mark McDonald is doing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Lisa, do you know? Do you have better information than I have? No, I would, I thought it was Library Square Park as well. Okay. That's what they applied for, and that's what we approved at the special events, and that was what the police put in their to budget for. To go from for library for to officers. Bradley? Right. Yes. At well, Trinity is right But they're meeting at Trinity the across the street right, but first. Right, you've got to close traffic, so you may oh, need right. another officer, but I'm sure they can rotate. But it's, it'll, right. be, it'll be fixed, but no problem. We'll be there. I'll be in high school to be there. <laughs> uh, now, the only thing I have is there's going to be an expungement Friday night. 
St. Stephen's Church, 7 p.m. Um, so I just want to say uh, what an amazing job the organizers of the St. Patrick's Day Parade, including our very own Eileen Chapman, that seemed like, at least I've been walking in it for the last five years, and that seemed like one of our biggest crowds, four years, four or five years, and however long I've been on the council, I've been walking in it, and, um, and no um, major issues that evening from what I read on our police reports. Um, so all around, great job by everyone including the visitors, the organizers, and the residents in Asbury. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I feel the exact same way. It was a great parade. Uh, nobody realizes it takes you a year to pull that off and so many volunteers. So great job. Uh, great day. The crowd on Ocean Avenue was like the crowd on Cookman Avenue, which we've never seen before. So definitely the biggest crowd ever. Looking forward to next year. Get back to the introduction of the municipal budget. As much as Amy said kudos, I totally agree. This is something that this council has been working for four for years. Four years. <laughs> uh, to get off a of transitional aid and to come in with, we were hoping a flat budget uh, to stabilize taxes, to be able to reduce them as much as it's only a couple pennies. Like Michael said, we're starting to walk in a year or two, we'll be. <coughs> trotting or running so uh, again i congratulate everybody who was part of this the council the administration the taxpayers for bearing with us knowing that we were in transitional aid and we couldn't reduce them in the past years and we said as soon as we could we would and we've done it so again michael great job and i thank you and your staff that's all i have matters by the city manager matters by the city attorney nothing at this time either all right, at this time we'll take a break until 7 p.m. regular meeting. Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Presta Coaster on Star Ledger on January 4, 2018 and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the City Clerk. Next on the agenda is the presentation of the Asbury Park Christian Club. So I'm going to read a letter from the Asbury Park Fishing Club, uh, specifically Joe Pilato. The Asbury Park Fishing Club held its 26th annual fishing flea market in Convention Hall on March 11th. This successful event would not have been accomplished without the efforts of you, Mayor Moore, and the council who continue to endorse our organization. Our membership appreciates this annual opportunity to showcase our beautiful beachfront and the city of Asbury Park. And thanks to Madison Marquette, especially Gary Matola, Chris Femi and staff in arranging for our show to return to Convention Hall. We also had more than 100 members of the Asbury Park Fishing Club volunteer their time and energy to ensure the success of this weekend's event. As is our practice, proceeds from the flea market are donated to over a dozen county nonprofits. Specifically as an expression of our commitment to Asbury Park, it is with great pride that I present the City Council the following checks to organizations that directly benefit the citizens of our great city. And just as two people who've been on council, Joey Pilato has been doing this for years for 90% um, of Asbury Park nonprofits and organizations in Asbury. So we want to super, super thank Joe Pilato for that. Yep, we thank Joe Pilato, we thank the Fishing Club. How many people have the event on a Sunday with close to $5,000 worth of tickets? Tonight, we have Asbury Park Fishing Club. Tonight, we have the Asbury Park Little League is going to be getting two thousand dollars. Yeah, we'll take a 
Zora. Uh, hold on, Kevin, get in the picture. <laughs> Thank you. The next check goes to the Esbury Park Boys and Girls Club. Do we have anyone here to accept that? Okay. And big brothers, big sisters of Monmouth County. Thank you. And the next check is the Asbury Park Recreation Trust. Okay, and that's really uh, the Asbury Park Recreation. Uh, the other one is um, Asbury's very famous Debbie DeLisi for the Asbury Park uh, Rescue, the Cat Rescue. And just so everyone knows, Debbie has been rescuing, saving, and then taking care of cats that were living under the Esbury Park Boardwalk for 10 years? 10 years. Ten years. So <laughs> kudos to her for that. Um, Esbury Park Fireman's Fund. I'm guessing that's Kevin. Um, another amazing um, Esbury Park resident who continues to do great stuff is Connie Breach for the Esbury Park Toy Drive. And Connie gets the Esbury Park Toy Drive and the Esbury Park Toy Drive Christmas in July. So kudos to you for all that you do, Connie and Barbara. And we're in what year of the Esbury Park Toy Drive? 18th year of the Esbury Park Toy Drive. So kudos to these two ladies for that. And Joey Pilato also gives to other organizations that aren't in Esbury Park, like the Littoral Society and Clean Ocean Action. So uh, one last round of applause for Joey Pilato. And Joey said not to thank him. Uh, so I'm still going to thank him, but there's so many people in the club. It takes 100 people to put that fishing show together, set up all the tables and everything. They couldn't do it without the help of Madison Marquette, so that is deeply appreciated. And again, how many agencies have an event on a Sunday and turning over close to $10,000 countywide three days later? So that's, that's, just, that's it. It is amazing. Uh, Joe has been here his entire life. There's other people involved, Joe Ercolino, uh, Dave, uh, and most importantly, Joe's wife, Casey. Without Casey, it, it wouldn't come off because Joe is like, worries more than me. He's like, just give him another Xanax and Casey will handle everything. So Casey, Joe, thank you so very, very much for helping Asbury Park. this time the city attorney would like to make a statement yes thank you with regard to the city's short-term <laughs> rental ordinance I'm very pleased to report that on March 2nd 2018 the Honorable Linda Grasso Jones of the Superior Court of New Jersey Monmouth County Law Division entered an order which dismissed with prejudice all counts of the complaint which had been filed by John Biondo Timothy Horman and the Committee of Petitioners 
which challenged the city's adoption of its short-term rental ordinance, otherwise known as Ordinance Number 2017-40, which occurred on November 8, 2017. As you will recall, during the city's consideration of that ordinance, the Committee of Petitioners had contended that the city did not have the authority to adopt its ordinance, given that a separate ordinance had been submitted by the committee on the same topic through the initiative process as authorized under the Faulkner Act. The initiative process allows citizens to propose ordinances to the council and potentially to the voters at large for consideration so long as the requisite number of signatures is achieved. The city respectfully disagreed with the position taken by the committee and the legal authority upon which they relied and proceeded to adopt its ordinance on November the 8th. The city also rejected the separate ordinance which had been proposed by the committee on the same topic, which was ordinance number 43, as not being in the best interests of the city. The litigation challenging the city's adoption of its ordinance as filed by the committee followed. This order now puts that litigation to rest with prejudice and confirms that the city was in fact fully authorized to adopt its ordinance and was not stopped from doing so as Mr. Biondo and the committee had contended. As such, the, committee, the city's ordinance rather, remains the law that is in effect regarding the short-term rental provisions of the city at this time. It should be noted, however, that the ballot question which was submitted by the Committee of Petitioners regarding their own ordinance will still be listed on the ballot for consideration by the voters in November as it had previously been certified by the city clerk absent further judicial intervention. That is a separate matter from the city's ordinance. And that's all I have to say at this point. This time, can I have a motion to open a meeting to the public, please? Second. Each member of the public has three minutes to speak. When you please come up to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> Hello, um, Jordan Modell, the law office on 2nd Avenue. Um, so, sort of vis-a-vis -vis the whole discussion that we've had on short term, the whole point of it was to keep Asbury, the, the city's position, which everyone agreed with, was to keep Asbury, Asbury. So I want to just talk about the building that's being proposed across the street from the, from the loss. Right now, I talked to Michelle, and I think it's 54,000 square feet, the entire lot, and 39,000 square feet for the building. The lofts, which and has, was proposed for 80 units. The loss, which is across the street, is 45,000 square feet and has 52 parking spots, meaning that there is three times, almost three times as many people going in across the street as there is in the lofts and only about 20% more land use for it. Given that, it's not that anybody or any of us in the lofts who are going to speak today, I think, are against the project. We're all for it. We know we need rateables and we especially need affordable housing. What we're mainly concerned about, or I'll just speak for me, what I'm mainly concerned about is parking. So um, if we look at the parking spots, literally up to four blocks away, which is Central Avenue, right? there are an average 15 parking spots because of the driveway, as I went through this with Mike, right, per street. So that's a total of 60 parking spots on that side of the street. If the residents of the new proposed building don't get free parking, then, like for example, with the Sackman, when they charge $150 per person for a parking spot downtown, people start spilling onto the streets. So my main worry is that 80 units are going to be spilling out onto our streets, which are already, they're crowded in the winter, they're not totally crowded, but in the summer, they're packed. Um, and that's going to affect the lifestyle for everybody on the west side. You're going to have people who could book park before who can't park now. The neighborhood is just an epitome of Asbury Park. It's rich, it's poor, it's middle class, it's upper middle class, it's black, it's white, it's Hispanic, there are businesses there. And I really wanna see the type of environment that we have maintained. So I would respectfully put forward, could the council just ensure two things? Um, one is that they adhere to the fact that there should be 120 parking spots, because that's the rule, that's the law, that the units coming in that's 1.5 units, 1.5 parking spots per unit. Two, that um, the parking spots, just like they are on the lofts, be given to the residents of the 
one, at least one parking spot per to the residents, and that they keep some guest parking, because right now in the plans there is no free parking for the two stores that are there. So again, the plans as they look now look, look lovely, but we don't know what it's going to end up being. So could we just ensure for the neighborhood's sake and to keep the balance in the neighborhood for rich, poor, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, um, that we look at the parking situation and ensure that there's plenty of adequate parking? Not bad, right? Three minutes on the done. <laughs> you practice. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Rick Mortlock. I also live at the Lofts and I serve on the board and I'm joined this evening by other residents at the Lofts. So um, I have a very broad, simple question on, on the development project and that is um, we understand that the planning board was not able to vet the details of this project under the 45 day uh, limit. Uh, so my question will be um, why was that not possible? Uh, that's First of all, and regarding the parking, I don't know if you've visited the, the grounds recently, but there's very little residential parking right now as it is on First Avenue or Second <coughs> Avenue, and especially Langford. Langford is used by tractor trailers, anywhere from three to five tractor trailers that are operated by the hospital care services company. Um, so there's, there's just no parking there. So this is a complex project. It involves remediation from a um, possibly toxic site. It involves quality of life, it involves parking, uh, it involves a number of things. And I think uh, it needs to be looked at by the planning board. We have a planning board to, to review these details and to serve as um, consultants to, to the council. So I would first ask why the planning board was not able to vet this in the 45 day uh, limit. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Danny McKee. Uh, I live on 7th Avenue. Um, just real quick, I wanted to thank the fishing club and give a little update of where we are as a Little League. Uh, this year, we did not charge any registration fee for our players. It was, had been $85 in the past. And we had the feeling that that was inhibiting a lot of people from signing up. Well, we have 100 kids signed up this year. Um, yeah. Which, you know, we, last year uh, we had about 72. Uh, we lost a bunch of kids who moved away. So about 50 of those 100 are new kids. So um, we're real happy with, with that, that we expanded our roster. Uh, rather than getting smaller, which is the case in many, many towns. Um, this is probably one of the few little leagues that has actually gotten bigger this year. So I want to thank uh, Joe. Everything that we do is dependent upon community support, and that community means from Asbury Park all the way to California, uh, because uh, we have people out there that donate too. But uh, we really appreciate the support that we get we can't do it without the help of the community. We thank you very much. Thank you. Danny, go back for a second, please. Why don't you tell everybody your GoFundMe account? Um, there is, if you go to GoFundMe, um, that was basically set up by the people at Murphy's Tavern, Heather and Rob. Um, and they set that up as a uh, to try to raise money to offset the uh, uh, registration fees that we weren't going to be bringing in. Um, but it's, it's still open, right? Yes, it's so still open. Give me an so if you, go to, if you go to GoFundMe.com and just put in Asbury Park Little League, it'll come up. Good. You know? So, uh, I mean, every, every dollar helps. And uh, I, we, uh, you know, from, from new bats, which we have to buy this year, to our summer camp program, which we've been running now for 11 years or so, uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing. So we well, appreciate hopefully it. Hopefully everybody here, everybody on APTV will watch that and make a donation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi. Uh, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. I wanted to ask the city manager 
if he has reviewed the zoning ordinance that I talked about two weeks ago? Uh, that's either a yes or no answer. Uh, also, I, I happen, I talked about this once before, those box trucks on, on the street. But now that we're starting to see out-of-state license plates on them. Indiana, there was one from Illinois. I, I think it's getting to be a serious problem with these out-of-state license plates. And I think that you better start paying attention to them. Uh, as we know, all over the country, things are going on, and we don't want anything to happen here. When you see out-of-state license plates, they're only supposed to be good for one month. There's a, a state law or a federal law that says you have to change your plates to New Jersey. So I, I want you to look into that, because I think that's going to be a real serious problem. I see it already. Uh, the zoning ordinance, the five and a half feet that I talked about from one property to the other, has, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about, is the budget committee still on the budget? And that's a yes or no answer, okay? I don't have, is the budget committee still, is there still a budget committee? Yes. I, I said, do you have a budget committee? There still is, they're meeting Monday at two o'clock. Okay, so okay. they're working on the budget? Yes. Because you're passing a temporary budget tonight. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. A temporary budget with what, Rita? Mm -hmm. With what? What about the zoning order? No, no, with, no, 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 with what, Rita? Because I'm going to make you say it with what, Rita? Because so many times you said a tax increase, tax increase. With a tax decrease, Rita? Are you going to say that? Okay, say it, Rita. What? Make, make me happy, say it. So? Okay. <laughs> I, I tried. <laughs> uh -huh. So the zoning, Michael? No. Simple answer is no. Oh, I want to congratulate also the plumbing inspector. Finally, somebody did something right. He came and inspected the new house, and he found that the plumbing was three and a half feet from my property line. So I, I don't know who he is, but I wanted to thank him anyway. Okay. One good thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> the plumbing inspector. Do you know, what's his name? Michael, what's the plumbing inspector's name? Huh? Michael. Oh. I don't remember. <laughs> you don't know his name? <laughs> All right, are you gonna review the zoning ordinance? No? No. You're going to leave it five and a half feet from the property line? If you want the zoning ordinance to be reviewed, there's a process. I don't review that at this point. Oh. Well, so who we, does we explained it? explained that to you last time. Yeah. No, you didn't explain it the last time. Yes, you did. Okay. Well, all right. Who do you go to to get the zoning ordinance changed? Michelle. Who? Michelle. Oh. Okay. Michelle. All right. And now you're going to look into what I told you about the box trucks with the out of town, out of state license plates? We, we've had questions come out many times from different sides of the towns, from many different people. We, we can't find a law saying you can only have a Carolina plate in Jersey for a month. There is no such law. We're being told by the police department. So it's something that is tough to enforce. We do have license plate readers on the cars, and they do scan them. If anything's wrong, then they're towed. But uh, it's, it's a problem all over the country. The cars in other states, it's cheaper to get insurance from other states, and people do it, and they beat the system. But it's just next to impossible to enforce. Yeah, but there's a lot of things going on in this country with bombs and guns. You have to look into these things, because we're a very small town. There shouldn't be that many license plates from out of town, out of state. Well, there are. I know there <coughs> are. Mm -hmm. Dwayne talked about it two years ago, but now it's happening on East Avenue. Well, and Dwayne's been talking about it in the Southwest, you're right, for two years, and we've been looking into it for two years. Okay. Thank you, Rita. All right, thank you. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrammer, Long Branch. Um, I wanted to say, that St. Patrick Parade was really successful, nice reviews. Yeah. I know it was a great parade. You guys did a good job. 
A couple of things I wanted to bring up. Uh, the people that live at the loft really didn't complain loud enough about those box trucks parked on Langford and 2nd Avenue. I don't think they're supposed to be over the overnight vehicles there. And sometimes on the weekends they have the trailers. We need a better job of keeping them off the, tra off the street because they should pay to park them in somebody's lot somewhere. There must be some place where they could park the, those trailers and not on the street. But you can go many n weekends, you'll see the trailers there. Um, are they permitted? There's box trailers left there overnight. I don't know. I doubt if they are permitted, but they are there all the time. So okay. I made a note to give to Michael to have to please look into I mean, that first thing. In I think it'd be really interesting if they were just towed away and they had to go pay a hefty fine to go pick them up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. The other thing was um, I wanted to say is you're discussing the budget. Has anybody's budget? Um, any department budget gone down? Anybody? Or even stayed the same, exactly the same? Just a question. Oh, Michael's saying yes? Okay. So maybe we can give them a star and say, could you tell the other people how you did it? Um, because that is a problem with the budget going out of the way. And the other thing I wanted to say is the, the new high rise that's going up. Are we videotaping or taking pictures every day that it's going up? Because that would make a great thing for prosperity to show how fast the building went up or how slow, whatever you want to say. But it'd be nice to show that building going up because it's pretty, I mean, it leaves a big impression when you come to Asbury Park. And that'd be something to put on the website showing how that building's going up. If they had a, you know, a picture a day or whatever you guys do. It's like when they show like the bees doing a beehive, showing that building go up, and the same thing with um, the um, Arthur Pavilion. That should be videotaped too because that's another important part of our beachfront. It's just an idea. And then how are we doing with those panels? Are they ever going to be put back on the building, on the convention hall? The missing copper panels? Yeah. Well, they're gone. They're, they're probably in some palace in Saudi Arabia. But um, I don't think anybody would cut them up. Um, but when are they going? When are, is there a deadline for them to restore that building or anything? There's no deadline for them to be replaced. There's no That's deadline really for them sad. To restore that building. That there's no way to make them do it. There's no deadline. We've been to Shippo. They've been to Shippo. They've been to the state, and they're doing interior work behind them. And they say when they're done with the interior work, then they'll replace them. But in the meantime, that building's being eroded by the elements of, of the weather, whether it's storms, nor'easters, you know, frost and thaw. I mean, that's how nature takes down mountains. I agree in principle, and their engineers disagree with me and you. I uh, know, guys. They're not in default of anything that the city can go down there and make them do anything about it. There's no way to rewrite the rules? Without a mutual contract, we can't unilaterally do it. Well, just remember that when there comes time when they need their back scratched. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. <clears throat> Motion to close. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion to close. Move it. Second. So the only thing I was going to, I just wanted to mention to the gentleman who talked about the planning board is that it's a totally different entity than, so the, the planning board's a completely different entity with different staff and different, I think it was, she, no, yeah, no, you don't have to get, I'm not, you don't have to get up. It's going to be an ordinance. There'll be another public portion, but it's a different entity with different staff and it, we can't say that we can't make the planning board do anything. So if, if it's getting close to the deadline and it's not being heard, we are a separate entity that cannot, but and I want to use the right wording. They weren't able to, was it they didn't get the documents? I think you're better off going to a planning board meeting and asking that. We don't that. know. Yeah, they, I, I can just comment that um, uh, as a matter of law, when a governing body wishes to either adopt a redevelopment plan or amend it, they have to make um, a referral of the proposal to the planning board. And the law says that the planning board then has 45 days to review and make recommendations back to the council. 
regarding the plan or amendments that are proposed. The law also says that if the planning board doesn't act within the 45-day period of time, that the council is then relieved from the requirement of getting any further input, input from the planning board. And uh, following um, the <coughs> referral of the proposal from the council to the planning board, the 45-day period of time elapsed with no action having been taken or review done by the planning board. So by law, the council is relieved from any further input from the planning board and can proceed to take whatever action the council deems is appropriate. As to what happened at the planning board level, we don't know. Well, nothing, right? But I mean, we know nothing. what happened after <laughs> the ordinance was referred to them, you know, I can't speak to that. But there are two members of the council that sit on the planning board, correct? Correct. It was never posted for an agenda for the planning board. Correct. So who among the planning board might have that answer? You, 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 who's responsible? You're going to have to get up to the microphone and say your name and address, please. We already, we already closed the public. Well, I can't close it on one and then somebody else speaks. So if you're going to open up for the young lady, I'm going to open up for this gentleman. Really quick, Frank Spina also. Hold on. We need to reopen public session. Motion to open again. Move it. Back in. Go ahead. So, uh, just a quick question following up. Um, you have to provide your name for the record. I thought I'd had. I'm sorry. Frank, Frank Spina, I'm also a resident of the Lofts. Um, who is the chair of the planning board to whom we could actually escalate this or get some kind of answer as to why there was no convening? Barbara Krasak. Okay. <clears throat> she wasn't the chair of the council. Okay. The the then it was her affair. Yeah. Okay. So it was our understanding that there was some turnover and maybe that could be some rationale as to why this was never met on? No. Nobody has any insight on this one. It's, it's, as much as I'm on the planning board, I'm just right. a member. I do not schedule, I do not tell the professionals. Mayor and council cannot tell the planning board, the zoning board, the board of education, the housing authority how to run their ship. Understood. So I know it sounds stupid that we have don't have an answer for you, but it's the law. Well, thank you for acknowledging that. It does sound stupid, but I'll also say that, the, you know, the it makes sense if there was some turnover in terms of who was responsible for leading the planning board. So, thank you. Yes. Okay, I can go now. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, good evening. My name is Melissa Williams. Um, my address is thirty six thirty three Highway thirty three in Neptune. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I own Max's Cleaning Service LLC since 1997. Uh, um, the seeds of entrepreneurship were planted in me in 1979 by my mother, who owned a wig store in Asbury Park. So since then, um, I've been creating programs and um, using my knowledge of entrepreneurship to coach and teach others. So I've created uh, Kids in Biz, which some people have heard of, Kids in Biz program, Youth Entrepreneurship Group, because I believe the kids and adults in Asbury Park uh, need to learn entrepreneurship and self-employment um, to self-empower themselves. So I've created um, the Kids in Biz program and was hoping that one aspect of the Kids in Biz program that I could bring to Asbury Park is, um, we've been selling the tie-dyes, as you can see, I have one. And a lot of people love the tie-dye, so it's very marketable. And I was thinking, hoping that I could have the children come in, um, youth of all ages, it doesn't matter, and sell the tie-dyes at um, the different events that we have here, and to pay them. Um, so they'll begin to learn sales skills, marketing skills, how to talk, how to speak, et cetera. And they'll have money in their pocket, so we can also um, work on financial literacy. That's one way of getting the Kids in Biz program in. Um, the second part is I also teach adults. I write books. Um, as you can see, I've created courses uh, for the cleaning service, which I feel is a good entry for anybody to learn how to start a business. And with all the construction and the housing going on in Asbury Park, you have a lot of people who are not employed. And a good way to um, with the cleaning business, they have all aspects, which is the uh, post-construction cleanup, 
you have um, landscaping, and this floor, floor stripping and waxing, window cleaning, and you have people who are in expungement, veterans, etc., single mothers like myself, and that's how I got started. It's low overhead costs, and I can provide training programs. And I'm trying to talk very fast because, okay. And then the third part of that is I also te teach um, minority certifications, which a lot of people, a lot of people I run into in construction and cleaning do not have. And that allowed me during 2007 um, to get a lot of uh, contracts. I've done Arbor Villas, um, work with the Lowy's, you know, I've had a lot of large contracts, and people ask me how did I get them. Also, I had a business loan. So all of this and information I can pass, I would like to give you brochures at the end of this so you can know a little bit more about what I do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No, no. No. Jordan, you can only talk once at the... <laughs> Well, you'll have, there'll be another bite, because it's an ordinance that has public input. You have another bite at the apple oh, for the laws. Motion to close. Have we ever taken like a two-minute recess to go to close executive session? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Councilmember Chapman abstains from purchase order 2018-00972. Have a motion to approve, please. Move it. May I have a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-114 authorizing lease agreement for fire equipment on storage of Main Street. I believe it was recommended for table this resolution. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-115, resolution authorizing the purchase of a Packer truck. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Council member, or any comments or questions? Council member Chapman? Yes. Council member Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-116, amending contract for T&M services, T&M Associates for services for the Sunset Ave footbridge project. Have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Yeah, question. Are we getting close to closing this project out? No. No? No. Any reason why? Well, this would extend it. It's not closed out until everything is paid and finalized. So there, the PW is still open, technically, and it's, it's, we don't want to pay this out of pocket or negotiate with them. It stays open until this is finished. Is this, is this the last piece? We hope. And then we'll find out how much of credit we got for the pilings that weren't driven 100 feet? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-117, authorizing the award of contract for installation and network cabling for City Hall. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-118, awarding contract to Millennium Communications Group for security cameras in City Hall. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-119, resolution authorizing the purchase of three police cars. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-121, resolution authorizing the purchase of a fire department SUV. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. 